Hello friends. Welcome to Fanfic Club. How are you all? I hope you're all doing great. So we are back with an amazing series on what if Naruto went in Danganronpa. Take a look at the summary given in the description. But before we start the story, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. And it would be great help if you will share this video with your friends. Now let's begin the story. Let it be known that Naruto never considered theft to be the first crime he would ever commit in his life. If he was going down the dark path, he'd rather do something more grand than just steal some stuff. Not that Naruto wanted to commit a crime in the first place mind you. But ya yeah, no. If he was going to do it, might as well have some fun with it. Seriously. How did he get into situations like this? That's the question Naruto had been asking himself for the past 30 minutes as he ran through the unrecognizable hallways of the building he was in, wherever it was. He didn't know how he had gotten here. One moment he had been fighting Madara alongside Sasuke. The next, he was here. Maybe it's because of that weird explosion. And by explosion, Naruto meant what Black Zetsu had done to Madara. The guy had betrayed the resurrected Uchiha at the last second and had used him as a literal chakra vacuum to suck up the chakra of everyone connected to the Shinju. It was a lot of people. During the whole ordeal, Madara had swelled up like some kind of pufferfish before exploding. The resulting explosion had blinded Naruto for a few minutes. When he came to, he found that he was now in these strange hallways. But more important than that. He couldn't use chakra anymore. Naruto being Naruto, he'd panicked and tried to contact Kurama and the other biju but to no avail. That had put him off. With no other options, the blonde tried to look around. It was then that he had ran into a man in a weird uniform carrying a flashlight. At first, Naruto had been relieved. He finally found someone, but he had no chance to get a word in before the man was shouting at him to get down on the ground for trespassing and that he was a thief. Naruto, Dot had no idea what the man was talking about. After the man tried to forcefully subdue him, Naruto made a break for it. The man came running after him, shouting thief the whole time. Still, even with no chakra, Naruto retained his physical prowess. The blonde was just too fast for the man in the strange uniform. This brought Naruto to the present, where he was running aimlessly through the dark halls of this strange building. He saw weird objects in display cases, as well as statues and elaborate paintings. Some items he recognized, like poems on scrolls. But for the most part, it was all bizarre to him. What is this place? He wondered as he stepped inside one of the larger rooms. He had to stop to marvel at some of the paintings. He had never considered himself much of an artist. That was Sai's thing. But even he could appreciate the beauty in art from time to time. Surprising, right? But his gawking soon came to a close when he noticed the man from before running into the room at top speed. Not only that, but two other men, both dressed in similar uniforms, entered the room from a different doorway. He was surrounded. Naruto silently cursed. I never should have stopped for the art. Art had not been kind to him today. As the whiskered blonde thought of his next move, the first guard pointed at him with sweat dripping down from his brow. Hold it. You're under arrest. Yeah. We already called the cops. Another said. It won't take them long to get here. You might as well give it up. Weighing his options, Naruto noticed a window to his right. A part of him knew that running away just made him look even more guilty, but at the same time, he had no idea what they were accusing him of in the first place. Stupid Madara. Once he was out of this mess, Naruto swore to get to the bottom of this. And to stick a kanai so far Madara's ass, the old Uchiha would never sit right again. With this in mind, Naruto charged the two men blocking his path, breaking past them without trouble. The other one tried to tackle him but missed and hit the ground instead. Triumphantly, Naruto leapt out through the window, smashing through the glass. It came raining down alongside the Uzumaki, whose tattered orange jacket fluttered in the night wind. Taking in the breeze, Naruto felt victorious for a split second. Having the cool wind wash over him did wonders to calm his nerves. But of course, this didn't last for too long. As he landed on the ground, Naruto was bombarded with unfamiliar sights to him. Tall buildings, bigger than anything back home greenery that resembled nothing to the forests back in Konoha or anywhere in the land of fire. Heck, the trees here looked nothing like the ones B had obliterated. And there was a grand fountain, Naruto gulped. He suddenly realized that this was a far bigger problem than he had first assumed. Just where was he? Jin Kiragiri was not a man who liked to be awake this late. 
Given his position as headmaster of Hope's Peak, however, he found his nights being cut shorter and shorter. Why did I ever take this job? He thought to himself, holding back his sigh. He wanted nothing more than to take off his suit and finally lie comfortably in his soft bed. It's what he deserved after a long day at work. Running a school filled with ultimates just wasn't easy. The staff also had their weird quirks that were on par with the students. Not an easy job to put up with. And here he was, following after Tengen who led him to one of the interrogation rooms in the police station in Tokyo. Having to drive out here, especially at this hour, hadn't left him in the best of moods. Just what is this about, Tengen? He respected the man, he really did. But he also didn't want to be involved in something pointless. The former headmaster chuckled lightly. You seem annoyed. I'm guessing I must have kept you up from going home. I apologize for that. At least he was aware of it. But this is something that cannot wait I'm afraid. What are you talking about? What are we doing here? A police station wasn't exactly a normal place to meet up. The board has caught wind of a very interesting fellow. Normally, Kizakura Kun would handle something like this. But given the circumstances, I thought it best to have you handle this matter personally. Jin raised an eyebrow at this. Based on the context here, he gleamed that this had something to do with a new student. This only raised further questions, though. Like, why was a mere high school student being held in a police station? Before Jin could ask his questions, though, Tengen motioned for him to enter the observation room next to the interrogation room. Stepping inside, Jin saw the teen in question through the one-way mirror, his eyes studying the blonde. The boy was seated in the middle of the room with a simple table in front of him, staring blankly at the wall. What caught Jin's interest at first was the boy's getup. It was some sort of jumpsuit, with the jacket having seen better days, and open-toe sandals. He wore a mesh shirt underneath that. He also had a headband with a strange symbol on it. All in all, it wasn't the typical style of a teenager this day and age. Tengen chuckled. Seems he's caught your interest, I? Jin had to shake his head. How can he not? What, what is he wearing? It almost looked like some sort of cosplay or something. That's not the most interesting part in all of this, though. Jin's eyes went to his colleague. Meaning? This young boy right here just broke into the Tokyo National Museum. He made the guards look like fools. Jin had to admit. Dot his curiosity had been piqued. This young teenager managed to pull that off. But then he remembered where they were. How was he caught? What did he steal? Tengen shook his head. He stole nothing. The only possessions on his person were some weapons. Outdated ones at that. Such as? Kanais and shurikens. Tengen looked amused. It was almost like he was a ninja with the way he broke in. The only thing that breaks that image is the orange. True enough. Orange just wasn't very, stealthy. Regardless, the boy had still managed to pull off a potential heist, and all on his own. Orange or not, it was nothing to scoff at. He was only captured after he stopped running once he was out of the museum, Tengen explained. Something made him freeze up. Without that miracle, the cops were certain they wouldn't have been able to get to him in time. Not just that, but it seems like the boy appeared out of thin air. No records of him exist. Not in Japan at least. The police want to widen their search radius, but that's going to take some time. Interesting. Adjusting his tie, Jin said, I understand the fascination with this boy. However, what does this have to do with me? And with the board. The board wants the boy to come to Hope's Peak in order to study his skills. Jin's eyes widen. What? But that's, Tengen raised his hand. I felt the same way as you. Especially since he was in police custody. But given that the boy didn't steal anything, the board was able to persuade the police into turning him over to us without much trouble. Jin was aware of the political clout the board of trustees had at their disposal. It wasn't just their control of Hope's Peak Academy that made them dangerous, it the influence they held on the country. But if they're willing to go this far, does this mean that? Jin trailed off, not daring to finish that statement. Tengen understood him well enough. Yes, it's for that project. The Izuru Kamukura project. In order to create the perfect hope, Hope's Peak needed to research the talents of the Ultimates extensively. No shortcuts could be taken. Not if they wanted to succeed. What title is this boy to be given? Tengen merely grinned some. Hearing what the man had to say, Jin felt like smacking his head against the wall. They can't be serious, it was necessary. It went a long way to make the police understand that the boy meant no harm, 
Tengen said, shaking his head. Of course, we still have to explain the details to him. Given that he hasn't said a word since he got here, I don't think that's going to be an easy thing. So we are to bring a boy we know nothing about into the school with the other students? That was basically a recipe for disaster. He has talent. That's all we need to know. Jin shot the old man an incredulous look. Talent. It was all the school cared about. Jin was aware of this course. He wouldn't be headmaster if he didn't. It didn't mean he supported the decision, though. Regardless, it seemed like his hands were tied here. Now that the board of trustees had spoken, there was little Jin could do. If they were standing together on this issue, then not even his position as headmaster could stop the boy's admission. That was the state of the current Hope's Peak Academy. Tengen turned to him. Let's go greet him, shall we? Naruto's mind was still numb. How couldn't it be? He was trying to wrap his head around everything that had happened to him in the past several hours. Suddenly being in that building, finding himself in a strange new place he'd never seen, transported to this facility. No matter how much he thought about it, his mind drew a blank. Where, am I? It was all Naruto could ask himself, over and over again. He wasn't in the middle of the war. Not anymore. He wasn't even in the land of fire for that matter. Not only that, but he had no chakra. And no Karama. His situation was looking rather grim, he had to admit. Naruto didn't even care to know why he had been brought here. That could come later. Right now, he just needed to be calm and try to find some answers, however he could. But how am I going to do that? He had no place to go, no one he knew. All he had were the clothes on him and whatever natural instincts he had developed over the years in his training. With his mind so embroiled in these thoughts, Naruto didn't notice the two men who walked inside the room a moment later. His attention only went to them when the younger of the two sat on the other side of the table, his arms folded. It seems like you've been through a lot tonight, young man. The man spoke carefully, choosing his words with great care. I can't even begin to imagine what must be going through your mind right now. Naruto said nothing to this. He could tell that this guy had a better attitude than those other men in the strange outfits from before. At the very least, he wasn't yelling at him. However, there is an offer that we want to extend to you, no strings attached. Despite himself, Naruto perked up when he heard this. An offer? What kind of offer? How would you like to attend Hope's Peak Academy? Naruto stared out the window of the so-called car he was in, taking in the sights around him. He had been stuffed in another one of these cars, before when those policemen came to arrest him, but he had been too out of it to marvel what he was seeing now. This really was a new world. Naruto hadn't wanted to believe it at first, but there's no room for doubt now. Somehow, he ended up in a new world. He just knew Anuchiha was to thank for this. That wasn't all that was new to him now. Naruto glanced to the two men sitting in the front seats. The one driving this car was the one they call headmaster of this school for ultimates. Naruto still had many questions in his head about this whole turn of events, but one thing was clear. He was going to Hope's Peak Academy. Hope's Peak Academy, Naruto tested the name with his mouth several times, the name rolling off his tongue with ease. It was also the first words he had spoken in some hours now. Jin nodded, his face impassive. Yes. That is the name of the school I represent. We, were hoping you would join the school alongside the rest of the upcoming Ultimates of this year. Ultimates? Jin had to pause at the questioning look the blonde was throwing his way. It was almost like this boy had no idea what an ultimate was. Tengen was the one who asked, Have you never heard of an ultimate, or of Hope's Peak Academy? Am I supposed to? The response was so fast, the two men had to take a few moments to recompose themselves. Well, this kid had certainly been living under a rock, hadn't he? After all, there was not one teenager in this country who didn't know about Hope's Peak Academy or the students that attended the school. Anyone who managed to get into the main course was practically a celebrity. And yet, this boy in front of him didn't know anything about that. Jin had to discreetly pinch himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming. Tengen chuckled, finding more humor in the situation than Jin. You're not from around here, are you? Naruto looked at the men before him, silently going over his options. Right now, he had no idea where he was, or how he could get back home. He didn't have chakra, and Karama was no longer inside him. As alarming as those facts were, Naruto knew the more pressing issue here was his lack of information. He needed to know more about this place, about where he was. But could these two men help him with that? 
Heck, would this Hope's Peak Academy help him, or would it be a waste of time? Hum. Coming to a decision, Naruto tried to look as confident as he could. I'm not from any of the big areas. I come from a village. Yeah, a village. Deep in the woods. We mostly keep to ourselves. Contact with the outside world is few and far between. So you have to apologize my lack of knowledge when it comes to this stuff. He had to mentally pat himself on the back for his quick thinking there. He didn't want others knowing about his true nature. Not right now at least. Maybe never. Jin didn't bother to hide his surprise. I, dot C. I have heard that such, communities existed. I didn't think a member from one of these remote places would cause this much trouble for us, though. Naruto scratched his cheek. From what little he had been able to understand when he was being brought to this place, it seemed like the building he had appeared in was very important to the people here, culturally wise anyway. It was so important that they had guards watching the property. Strange looking guards in weird outfits, but guards nonetheless. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to cause any trouble like that. It was an accident. I had no idea that place was so important. Why did you come to the city? Tengen asked, jumping straight to the next point of interest. Surely you must have a reason for leaving your home like this. He was here involuntarily, but Naruto couldn't say that, now could he? I wanted to see more of the world. I was just, curious. And your clothes? Jin questioned. He was glad the boy was being cooperative with them. Things would go a lot smoother this way. You look like you've been in a war zone. The man was more right than he realized. I got through some other mishaps on my way here, Naruto said sheepishly. Or as sheepishly as he could anyway. It seems like there's a lot more security around these parts than I realized. Jin mentally groaned at this. Had this boy been causing more problems elsewhere? If he came with them to Hope's Peak, those problems would basically become his. It just meant more work for him, and he didn't want that. Once again, Tengen was more amused than Jin. Probably because he was just an advisor now, so he had no real stake in this. Well, you've certainly made a name for yourself in this incident, my boy, Tengen said. But I must ask one last question. These skills of yours. How did you get them? Did you have a teacher? Is your village responsible for them? Naruto had to think about how to answer this a bit more carefully than the previous questions. Something like that. My village prides itself in secrecy. In order to maintain that secrecy, some people are tasked to train around those skill sets. Tengen smiled. Like ninjas then. Naruto had to look away. If you wish to call it that, then alright. These guys knew about ninjas. What the fuck? This world. What kind of place is this? Why did you leave then? Naruto shrugged. Like I said, I wanted to see what else was out there. I didn't want to be confined to my village for the rest of my life. I want to explore and experience new things. It wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the truth either. Jin studied the boy before him, trying to make sense of the mystery presented to him. It wasn't every day that he met someone as interesting as this boy. Even with all the answers he had received, Jin wasn't convinced that he knew the full story here. The boy was definitely hiding something. What, Jin didn't know. But all his years as a detective had left him with a great insight, which he trusted. Still, despite this, Jin knew he couldn't prove anything. Not with more information. And without knowing where the boy's supposed village was. He held back a sigh. I think it's time for me to ask you guys some questions, Naruto said and leaned back in his seat. I think it's only fair after everything you've asked me. Jin and Tengen shared a look with one another. Fair enough. Jin turned to him again. What do you want to know? Naruto watched as the car pulled up to a really grand looking house in the suburbs. The house was just as big as his apartment complex back in Konoha. Maybe a little smaller. But still. Who needed this much space? Tengen chuckled when he noticed Naruto's look. Really big, right? Naruto nodded. Yeah, no offense, old man, but I think it's a waste of space. Tengen looked more amused now. You're right about that. But, and I don't mean to brag, I have more money than I know what to do with. So I may have gone a bit overboard with my spending. Naruto didn't respond and instead got out of the car with Jin and Tengen doing the same. The blonde gave the odd looking machine a sour look. It wasn't that he didn't like riding in the vehicle, it's just that he could probably run faster. Not to mention that staying seated in one place for so long like that, it just wasn't in him. 
he should probably get used to it, though, if this, Hope's Peak Academy, was anything like he was told. Yes, Naruto was going to school. But not just any school. Apparently this school was very special, so special in fact that every high school student in the country wanted to attend. It was that famous. But what exactly made it so famous? Well, it had to do with the students that went there. They were all talented individuals specializing in one field or another, earning them the title of ultimate. There were all kinds of ultimate students at the school apparently. They all used their talents for the sake of hope of the country. This upcoming class in particular was so big that it was going to be divided into two. Naruto was going to be attending one of these two classes, or so Jin told him. None of this particularly mattered to Naruto all that much, though. Talent, celebrities, hope, whatever. Sure, he thought it was noble what the school was doing, especially for the country of Japan. Having the best suited individuals on the front lines of every major job field was sure to produce nothing but positive results for the future. The catch is. Naruto wasn't from this world. The Uzumaki didn't want to sound like an egotistical asshole, but the dealings of this world had nothing to do with him. His main priority was to find a way home, and fast. He needed to see the fourth shinobi war to the end. This meant kicking Madara's resurrected ass once and for all. He couldn't do that if he was stuck here, though. Plain and simple. The only reason Naruto took Jin on his offer of joining Hope's Peak Academy was for the benefits that came with graduation and of the possible connections he could make here. From what Naruto could see, the best chances he had of finding someone who could help him return to his world was through this place. Until something better came around, Hope's Peak Academy was his best choice at the moment. This was why Naruto had been given the title of the ultimate ninja. It was lousy as far as Naruto was concerned, but he had pretty much confirmed to them by this point that he was a ninja, or close enough to them that he could be called one. There was also the issue of money and housing to settle. Naruto had neither here. This explained why he was here now. I'm gonna be staying here. Naruto said out loud, still shocked by the size of the house. Tangan chuckled. You said you're not from around here. I'm not sure how you've managed to get by up until now, but considering that we're making you stay in one place, I figured it was the least I could do. Naruto was flattered, he really was. He would have been fine staying at the so-called dorms like most students did, but then Tengen went and offered this to him. Jin did not approve of this decision, but Tengen had been insistent about the matter. And so, here they were. This is where we part ways, Jin spoke. My house is in the opposite direction. And not as big. Naruto glanced at him before turning to Tengen again. He had to wonder why he was staying with the old man, but not with the headmaster. Was there a reason for that? Or was it at random? Or maybe was it because Tengen had the bigger house? They did say it was to help me adjust, but, Naruto didn't buy that excuse. He wasn't great at reading other people like some of his friends, but he still trusted his gut above anything else. And his gut was telling him that there was something else going on here. Jin drove off after that, promising to call Naruto first thing in the morning. The Uzumaki simply watched the car speed away, still trying to wrap his around such a machine actually existing. It wasn't just the car either. It was the whole world around him. Everything, dot was different. Roads, houses, buildings, technology. Some seemed reminiscent to the technology back in his world. But it was still a lot to swallow for him. Shall we go? Naruto followed after Tengen who led him to the house. There was a pretty long driveway that led to the property, and a big fence that kept people from entering without permission. Naruto felt that it made the place look more unwelcoming but maybe that was the intention. I don't spend much time here, Tengen told him as the two stepped inside the home. There was a big living room waiting for Naruto. It was a pretty standard looking living room. The furniture looked expensive, as did the tables, but it was something that could come out of a magazine. It didn't look personal. Naruto had to stop himself from gawking at the giant TV, though. I'm usually back at the school, working long shifts or taking care of other matters. Tengen continued as he showed Naruto the other rooms in the house. The kitchen was pretty massive too, with marble as the foundation. There was a dining room next to it. Tengen kept a study as well, which was actually the room he used the most, aside from his bedroom of course. There was a bathroom by the kitchen, which was for house guests. A laundry room stood past the kitchen. Finally, shooting off from the living room, there was a hallway that led to the bedrooms. There were three rooms in total. One was Tengen's, and the other two were unoccupied. 
You'll basically be having the whole place to yourself, Tengen concluded as he showed Naruto the room he was staying in. That's kinda strange, isn't it? Naruto finally said while inspecting his new room. He was grateful for it. It was clean, and was a lot bigger than his room back in his cheap apartment in Konoha. Aren't you supposed to be watching me? Hum? Is there supposed to be a double meaning in there somewhere? So this old man was sharp, huh? You're keeping me close to you because you don't trust me. Naruto looked at the man, the two locking gazes. That's why you offered me a place here and instead of having me stay in the dorms like normal students do. Tangan chuckled and clasped both hands behind his back. So you picked up on it. Despite seeming distracted, you've been keeping a close on everything. Not bad. Your ultimate ninja status won't disappoint the school. Naruto did not say anything to this. He wasn't going to get sidetracked and let the man not answer his question. Tengen picked up on this and chuckled louder. I guess I wasn't wrong about you. Lying to you will probably do more harm than good, so I guess the truth it is. Naruto decided to take that as a compliment. Despite your skills, you're not a very good liar, Tengen said. Or rather, it's more like your eyes betray you. The headmaster noticed this as well. You weren't telling the truth back there. Naruto opened his mouth, but Tengen quickly raised his hand. Don't bother. I can tell that you don't mean any harm. It's the reason why I had no problems with letting you join Hope's Peak Academy despite your questionable background. And by questionable, he meant practically non existent. Tengen continued. But I will admit that I am quite intrigued. In you, I mean. I doubt you'd be forthcoming if I asked you now, and you'd probably vanish without a trace if I pushed you too hard. This arrangement will benefit us both greatly. It will give me plenty of time to unravel all your secrets. Naruto didn't know what to say to this. He hadn't expected the man to be so truthful with him. I, dot now that you've told me this, you know I'm going to be on my guard, right? Hell, I can walk out the front door right now, old man. Tengen didn't believe this, though. I highly doubt that. The fact that you accepted our offer to join the school shows that there's something you need there. That's why I'm sure you'll be sticking around for some time. At the very least, until you have found whatever it is you're looking for. Naruto had to stop himself from cursing. Was he really that easy to read? Cause this old man had him pinned down good. Also, here. Those thoughts ceased when Tengen threw a familiar pouch at him. Naruto's eyes lit up in recognition. This is, that's the only thing you have on you, right? Besides your clothes, I mean. Tengen tilted his head to the side. It took us a lot to convince the station to give those back to you, but there you go. Naruto gripped the kanai pouch tightly. It wasn't much, but other than his headband, this was all he had to remind him of his home. It was a special treasure to him now. Tengen watched the boy go into a more somber mood. How very interesting. You should get some rest, my boy. Tengen made for the door. After all, tomorrow is going to be a very hectic day for you. Naruto's eyes left the pouch and went to the retreating Tengen. Now what could that possibly mean? Naruto learned firsthand what Tengen had meant by hectic day, the night before. Hectic just wasn't enough, though. It was more like insane and mind-blowing. First, Naruto had been made to wear old people clothes. According to Tengen, he couldn't be walking around in his battered outfit. It would just attract too much attention. But since Naruto didn't have any other clothes on him, Tengen had lent him some of his old clothing. Since Naruto was taller and a lot more buff, for a lack of a better word, the clothes had been painful to put on. Thankfully, the first thing on the agenda was clothes shopping. According to Tengen, Hope's Peak Academy was paying for it. Naruto had his doubts, especially since he knew nothing was truly free. With no other options, though, Naruto accepted the money vowing to pay them back somehow. Next was a phone. And here was where things got interesting. And by interesting, Naruto meant bizarre. How the hell do these things work? Tengen watched with great amusement as Naruto continued to poke his new phone, on the verge of his tearing his own hair out. The blonde had chosen an orange case for it, as to be expected. But other than that, he bore no love toward the little machine. It's usually people my age who struggle with technology these days. So seeing someone so young sharing in our pain, it's a wonderful feeling. Naruto would have glared at him were it not for him trying to figure out the phone still. This was almost like a challenge, and Uzumaki Naruto never backed down from a challenge. But that wasn't all that Naruto had to deal with today. Jin had called earlier and informed him of his placement. 
Hope's Peak Academy was fast when it came to securing talent. Anyway, from what he had been told, he was going to be a part of the 77th class, Section B he was going to have 15 other classmates. Compared to the academy back in Konoha, the classes here were a bit smaller. Not that it mattered to Naruto all that much. He wasn't here to make friends. He was here to get back home. The fact that attending class wasn't mandatory was a huge plus to him. Going to classes would just slow him down. It seems you're about ready, Tengen said as he sipped tea from the living room. Naruto joined him, still annoyed with the stupid phone but letting it go for now. The blonde was now dressed in orange sweats and a simple white t-shirt. No matter where he was, Naruto would always love orange. There's still a lot of things I don't understand, old man. Naruto glanced at his phone. Technology here is just, a lot different than my village. Tengen waved off his concerns. I'm sure you'll get used to it soon enough. It's scary how adaptable humans can become. And if you still have more questions, I'm sure your classmates won't mind helping you out. So you're just gonna let me be on my own? That doesn't sound very helpful of you. It's the way of the world. Besides, I sincerely doubt you'd want me hanging over your shoulder. You have things to do, right? Now Naruto understood. The geezer was hoping to catch information on him while he didn't expect it. He had a feeling the headmaster would probably be doing the same. Well, I do owe them a lot, so this much shouldn't matter. Probably. He still needed to pay them back, though. Maybe he could get a job. It wouldn't be much, but it was a start. But where could he, without previous work employment in this world, find a steady and comfortable job? Hmm. He needed to think more on this later. What about my classmates? Naruto then asked. If there was someone in his class who was talented enough to help him, then he would probably attend classes to get to know them. Can you tell me anything about them? Tengen considered the question for a moment before smiling. I'm afraid that's something you'll have to learn on your own. They don't know anything about you, so it would be unfair if you found out about them, don't you think? Naruto grumbled. Stingy old man. What Tengen failed to mention to the blonde were the online comment boards filled with information about Hope's Peak Academy and its students. Not just that, but that his name would also be on there soon enough. But it wasn't like he was lying to the poor boy, sort of. He he he. The next several days went by faster, albeit tediously. Other than trying to get acquainted with the inner workings of this new world, there wasn't much else for Naruto to do. Studying wasn't exactly his forte. And without shadow clones to back him up, it was a slow process. Thankfully, the language was the same here as it was back in his world. Having to learn a whole new language would have been, disastrous to say the least. The only interesting part was his job hunt. He had applied to several places during his search, only to be rejected. His search had seemed almost hopeless, until he stumbled upon a little ramen shop in the downtown area. A nice old man ran the whole place, but it seemed like he was getting too old to keep doing all the work on his own. Naruto had applied for a position on the spot. So that was fun. He could now earn money while being surrounded by ramen. It was a dream come true for him. He could also start paying Tengen and the school the money he owed, even though the old man kept insisting it wasn't necessary. Naruto wasn't one to let his debts go unanswered, after all. All in all, his new life here was starting to shape into something a lot different from the one back in Konoha. There was less violence, less fighting for his life, and had an overall mundane feel to it. Naruto didn't know whether this was bad or not. Anyhow, all of that was just the icing on the cake for what his new life was all about. Hope's Peak Academy was the cake itself. Naruto realized this as he stood before the massive school, his invitation letter in hand. Jin had mailed it to him a few days ago. He had brought it with him for reference. I'm supposed to meet at the gym, it was the first time he would be attending a normal school, so he was feeling a bit hesitant. But he couldn't let that feeling take hold. He needed to do this, for his friends back home, for himself. Yes. That's right. This was necessary for his future. With his resolve renewed, Naruto took his first steps toward Hope's Peak Academy. What would the future hold for him here? One thing was certain. Things would never be the same for the blonde after this. Naruto peered down the empty hallway. He had already walked past the main hall, so now it was only a matter of finding that damn gym. Thankfully, the instructions were pretty straightforward. Still, he didn't want to draw attention to himself. Like, at all. He was on a mission here, and attracting attention would only complicate things. 
but it might be too late for that already, the headmaster and Tengen were already keeping their eyes on him, so it was probably a moot point by now. Whatever. It's not like they'll ever find out where I'm really from anyway. No one could know that. Putting that aside for now, Naruto started to make his way down the hall for the gym. As he turned the corner, though, he suddenly bumped into someone. Acting fast, Naruto not only steadied himself but also made sure to grab the other person by the wrist before they went tumbling down. I need to be more focused on my surroundings, Naruto thought with a shake of his head. It was here where the sound of someone crying reached his ears. Looking over to the person he had bumped into, Naruto realized that it was a girl. A very beautiful one at that. She had long, choppy, dark purple hair that was cut unevenly. She had light, grayish purple eyes with a beauty mark under her left eye. She wore some kind of nurse outfit and had most of her left arm and right leg bandaged up. All in all, this girl had a very peculiar appearance. Naruto then remembered that she was crying. I'm so sorry, she apologized to him, stepping back and clutching her arms over her chest. I didn't think anyone else was coming, s so I wasn't paying attention, and, a and I'm sorry. Naruto scratched his head. This girl was, dot odd, to say the least. He couldn't put his finger on it either. It was almost like, dot she was expecting him to lash out at her. Huh. But first things first. You don't have to apologize so much, ya know? It's not like it's your fault. I was the one who ran into you. So it's cool, okay? The girl's eyes widen. Ah. Naruto had to take a step back. W what? What's wrong? She was staring at him like he was from another planet. I I. I wasn't expecting you to a apologize, he 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 he. She then started giggling to herself, her face bright. Naruto, Dot was stumped. This girl had gone from being teary-eyed, to confused, to happy in the span of a few seconds. That was a lot of emotions right there. She twiddled with her fingers. He he he. I am so happy. It was Naruto's eyes that widened this time. That pose of hers, it reminded him a lot of a certain Hyuga friend of his back in his world. In fact, the more he looked at this girl, the more he realized that she and Hanada looked very much alike. But he needed to perish those thoughts. This girl wasn't Hanada. Trying to compare the two would be unfair to both of them. You um. The girl began to squirm under his gaze. I is there a reason you're staring a at me like that? Her eyes widened again. Ah. It's because I'm so unsightly, isn't it? I'm sorry. She clutched her head in fear. W would it make you feel better if I took my clothes off? What the fuck? T that's not it. Naruto did his best to try and calm the girl down. You don't have to do that. Seriously. I was just thinking of something is all. It's not your fault. The girl began to calm down, putting Naruto at ease. The blonde felt like he had wasted so much energy just talking to this girl. But at the same time, he didn't think of it as annoying. Weird. Anyway, what are you doing out here? Naruto looked past her toward the door behind her. It was labeled as the gym. Are you going to the gym too? Why yes. I'm going to the entrance ceremony for this year. She clutched her arms again. B but I was so nervous about going in and meeting so many new people, that I froze in fear. I haven't been able to going in even though it's almost time for the ceremony to begin. Huh. So this girl was going to be a classmate of his, huh? Naruto smiled. I see. Well, that's where I'm going too. Looks like we're going to be classmates. The girl looked at him. Are really? She couldn't help but smile a little as well. That's amazing. I didn't think I would be meeting another classmate so soon. Naruto shrugged a little. I guess. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Ah. M. My name is Sumiki Maiken. She blushed a little. I hope we can get along from now on. Yeah, likewise. The now named Maiken seemed pleased by his words. Well, so much for not making friends here. Deciding to push that side for now, Naruto motioned for the door. Shall we? Maiken nodded. Why yes. She now had more confidence to face the rest of her classmates. She only hoped that they were as nice as Naruto was. And so, the two teens entered the gym. The gym was decorated for a typical entrance ceremony. There was nice carpet laid out, chairs had been put up, and banners were raised. All had the Hope's Peak Academy insignia on them. There were other teens waiting inside already. There were four teen in total, seven guys and seven girls. They were a pretty even class then, since Naruto and Maiken made a total of 16 students. 
The other students turned to them when they entered, but then they settled to going back to their business when they saw who it was. Naruto scratched his cheek. So these guys are the so called ultimates, huh? They were some of the country's best, brought here together in order to polish their talents further. It was hard to imagine what kind of people they were. Then again, he was now considered an ultimate. And so was Mikan now that he thought about it. And she didn't seem bad at all. T there are so many new people here, Mikan whispered, twiddling with her fingers. Naruto shrugged. Don't worry about it. They're just like you and me. We're all on the same level, aren't we? Some laughter reached their ears. They turned to see a guy walking up to them. He was dressed in casual clothes, similar to Naruto. He was tall and rather skinny. He had light gray-green eyes, and sickly pale skin. His hair was shoulder-length and naturally wavy, of an unnaturally pale off-white color. It gave him a rather ghostly appearance, if Naruto was being honest. That's a rather optimistic thing to say, he spoke as he neared them. But then again, that's the attitude I'd expect from an ultimate. Naruto tilted his head ever so slightly. Thanks, I guess. He didn't know how to take that comment, so he brushed it off. But it's true. We're all the same here, aren't we? The new guy crossed his arms. Well, among you, I guess that'd be true. But I don't think that comment would ring true if spoken about me. Why? He sighed. He looked rather disappointed about something. I only got in here due to luck. That's rather stupid, wouldn't you agree? L luck. Mikan was confused. How does that work? He chuckled sheepishly. Haven't you heard? Every year, Hope's Peak Academy holds a lottery out of completely ordinary students. Whoever wins gets to join the school as the ultimate lucky student. That's basically what I am. Just lucky. I is that so? Mikan was rather surprised about this but didn't comment further. Naruto just took it in stride. It was rather unusual to consider something as vague as luck as a talent, but oh well. The school must have its reason for wanting to research such a skill. Oh, but how rude of me. He shot them a smile. I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Komeda Nagito. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, same. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. I I'm Sumiki Maiken. I, I hope we can get along. The newly named Nagito smiled some more. Emhem. I recognize you, Sumiki san. You're the ultimate nurse, aren't you? Many people were discussing your achievements online. You're rather popular, aren't you? EA? That seemed to throw Mikan for a loop. T they were? Why? Everyone is rather popular online, you know. Nagito then looked down, smiling to himself. Of course, with the exception of me. While Mikan was freaking out about her sudden popularity, Naruto was more than happy to congratulate her. Congrats, Mikan. I didn't know you were so awesome. Still, he had to wonder how someone so skittish could become a nurse of all things. Man, Sakura Chan would have a field day with this. Mikan was suddenly freaking out about something else entirely. EA? M. Mikan? M. My first name. Now, Naruto was lost. Uh, yeah? That is your name, right? A. Ah. I. It's just the first time anyone has called me by my first name before. Naruto shrugged. Oh. Okay. He didn't see the big deal with that. He called all of his friends by their given names. Nagito couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha ha. You're a strange one, Uzumaki kun. Could it be, dot are you into seducing women? Mikan turned bright red. Naruto gave the boy a dull stare. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Hum. Is that so? Nagito let the matter drop and said, Well, I must admit something. I was able to find information on just about everyone in our class. Except you of course. I only saw your name being mentioned once or twice, but nothing concrete. Naruto wasn't all that surprised. He had read up on this internet. It housed all the information people could ever need or want. It was honestly kind of scary. But of course, there was no way the internet would have anything on him. It hadn't even been a month since he had arrived to this world. But damn that Tengen. He hadn't bothered to tell the blonde about this beforehand. He would have followed Nagito's example and looked up the others if he had known. Whatever. Nothing he could do about it now. Well, that's good. If everyone knew about me, I wouldn't exactly live up to my title. Oh? Nagito was genuinely intrigued now. What is your title then? Naruto sighed and looked away. It still sounded silly to him, but hiding it here would probably bring more problems than it would solve. 
Might as well just get it over with. I'm the ultimate ninja. Mikan squeaked. And ninja? You're really a ninja? Yep. I didn't know any existed still, Naruto smirked. Oh, we're around. Sorta. Humming, Nagito looked over Naruto's attire, noting the orange. That is rather, surprising to hear. That changed Naruto's mood completely. He grumbled. You don't like the orange either, I'm guessing. Nagito smiled, trying his best to look innocent. Oh my. Looks like I've been caught. Bastard, at least try to hide it. I think it looks great, nnn na, Uzumaki-san. Poor girl. She had tried to use his first name, but it looked like she still couldn't get there. Still, Naruto was more than happy to accept the compliment, and so, he patted the girl on the head. Thanks, Mikan. I knew you could accept the awesomeness of the orange. Mikan giggled, fully delighted to be praised and petted like this. It was the first time anyone had been so kind to her, and it brought a great feeling to her heart. Nagito found the whole exchange to be amusing. Well, I'm not sure how helpful I can be, but if you need help talking to the others, I'm more than happy to lend a hand. The others, huh? Naruto glanced around the gym, seeing the rest of the class minding their own business. A part of him knew that he was already messing things up. This wasn't how things were meant to go. He wasn't supposed to be friendly with these guys. His normal carefree personality won out, though. That's why he felt great bonding with new people. They're all pretty wild out and eccentric, but I'm sure you can win them over, Nagito said. Well, if Nagito and Maiken were any indication, then Naruto was sure the rest of his new classmates were bound to be crazy too. It suited him just fine, though. Normal was overrated. But before they could continue, a shout echoed throughout the gym. It was one of the girls. A very well-endowed girl at that. She had a very athletic and curvaceous body. She had tan skin, dark gray eyes, and very unkempt chestnut hair. She wore a short-sleeved white shirt with the top few buttons undone, exposing a large amount of cleavage. She also had on a red miniskirt and cream-colored loafers. The girl seemed to be picking a fight with one of the guys. A very masculine guy at that. Seriously, the guy could give the rakage a run for his money in terms of muscles. He had on a white tank top under a blue track tracksuit, with the jacket wide open. He had chains around his neck with a whistle hanging from the middle. And, Dot was a blue electric aura coming out of his eyes? What the heck? Naruto had no better reaction than that, blinking as the two suddenly began to trade blows with one another. Chairs were sent flying off, and some of the floor began to tear apart. W what is this? A girl with dark red hair exclaimed. She had light freckles across her cheeks and had olive green eyes. She was holding a camera. She was dressed in some kind of pale green uniform, probably from her old school. These guys are crazy. Nagito didn't seem phased at all. Oh, I guess Awari san is as hot blooded as I heard. I is this the famed Japanese lunchtime rush? A beautiful pale blonde shouted in excitement. She was dressed the fanciest out of all the teens here. Her blue eyes were dancing with elation as she watched her two classmates fight with one another. You um, Miss Sonia, it isn't lunchtime yet, one of the other students informed her, pointing to the obvious. It was another guy, and he had hot pink hair, probably dyed. His teeth were pretty sharp too, reminding Naruto of that shark guy from the Akatsuki. He wore a blue jumper with several hot pink markings and a black cap to go along with it. Another girl, this one with long multicolored hair, beamed brightly. Oh lala, they're certainly going at it, this building won't last for long if they go all out. Despite her words, she didn't seem worried at all. What a weird girl. Passion is certainly being shot to the roof, if I say so myself, a short round boy commented with some laughter. He was dressed in a typical chef's outfit, giving Naruto the impression that the guy was a chef as well. But who knew? I'm gonna get you this time. The well-endowed girl cried out as she went in for a kick. Unfortunately for her, her opponent was more than ready for her, and counterattacked with a powerful blow to her stomach that had her skidding back across the gym. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. They weren't moving nearly fast enough for him to not see their movements. But the power behind that punch, it was impressive to say the least. Miken was shaking from her spot. Nia saw, this is bad. What if they get hurt too badly? I have to help them. Hey. The muscular student scoffed. That punch wasn't strong enough to break bones, so don't worry about it. He he he. The girl with multicolored hair giggled. 
so he says, but I'm sure that punch would break anyone else's bones off. Another short student, this one blonde and in a suit, scowled. Don't say it all carefree, dumbass. Your speed is passable, but it's still not good enough. The muscled student cracked his knuckles. Your strength is severely lacking. You cannot hope to win against me like this, Awari. Tacha. S shut up. The girl struggled to stand. I'll make sure to beat you. Mark my words. Hey. I commend your spirit. Naruto shook his head. Well, this is certainly something. He didn't think he'd find people fighting in this world. At least, fighting on this level. In all his time here, with all the people he's met, he found them to be just normal civilians. The only exception to that was perhaps Tengen. But these two, Nagito crossed his arms and nodded to himself. Yes. I expected nothing less from them. They really are ultimates. Naruto glanced at the boy but said nothing. His opinion of Nagito was, well, he really didn't know what to think of the guy. He seemed nice, but there was a part of him that was telling him that there was more to Nagito than what he was seeing. And when it came to judging others, Naruto thought he was usually spot on. The other blonde in the gym, this one short and kiddish in appearance, snickered. They should have taken each other out right here and now. It would have been more exciting that way. Naruto simply sweat dropped. Now he knew who the vicious one here was. All right, kids. Break it up. All 16 students turned to the stage of the gym where a man now stood. He looked pretty relaxed despite the fact that part of the gym was now destroyed. He had a thin mustache and goatee and ragged blonde hair with blue eyes. He wore a white tuxedo, with a green undershirt and black vest top, with a blue, almost gray tie. He also wore a white hat. This is no time to be fighting. It's supposed to be the entrance ceremony, after all. You're the one who decided to show up late, the guy in the dark suit said, looking pretty annoyed. The man chuckled. Yeah, sorry about that. I had a killer hangover. It took me longer to recover this time than usual. Not sure why. The 16 students all had the same thought. Was this guy really their new teacher? If so, they were screwed. Anyway. The man made himself comfortable on the stage, sitting by the edge. We'll be together for the next year at least, so we should get to know each other. He pointed at himself. Many of you already this, but the name's Kizukura Koichi, and I'll be your homeroom teacher. Naruto recognized the name. Tengden told him how this guy was the main scouter for the school. If it weren't for the fact that he had been in police custody, Naruto would have met him as well. So, who wants to go next? Name and title, so the others know why you're here. Oh. Abuki wants to go first. The girl with the multicolored hair was the first one to jump at the opportunity. He he he. Abuki is Miyota Abuki. Abuki's tittle is the ultimate musician. Abuki likes to rock out, so anyone willing to join Abuki, you can. The beautiful blonde from earlier clapped. Spectacular. She noticed the others all looking at her and bowed. Hello there. My name is Sonia Nevermind. I am the ultimate princess. It is a pleasure to finally be here. Naruto had to do a double take. This girl was a princess? I didn't think they still had those in this world. It looked like he still had a long ways to go when it came to knowing the ins and outs of this new world he was in. The guy with hot pink hair whistled and shot them a thumbs up. Since Miss Sonia has gone, I guess it's my turn next. I'm Soda Kazuichi, and I'm the ultimate mechanic. Nice to meet you all. Well, he was certainly very eager, wasn't he? The girl with short red hair stepped up next, giving a friendly if not nervous smile. I'm Koizumi Mahiru. I'm the ultimate photographer. Let's all get along. Naruto found her to be the most normal here so far. Other than that, he had no strong opinions about the girl. MHMHMM. So many great things to look at here. The short round guy in the chef outfit spoke up next. My name is Hanamura Teruteru. I'm known as the ultimate cook. He grinned. But I'd rather if you guys called me the ultimate chef instead. It just sounds more appealing, ya know? This guy was just giving off a dangerous vibe, wasn't he? Hmph. Idiot. The kiddish blonde with twin tails sneered, her face darkening. It was enough to make Teru Teru look nervous. You um, dot did I hear that correctly? She decided to ignore him. I'm Sionji Hyoko, and I'm the ultimate traditional dancer. It looked like that was all she had to say. What a strange girl, Naruto thought. But then he realized that he could say the same about most of the people here. Including him. 
So maybe he shouldn't talk. Yo. The well endowed girl from before went up next. It seemed like she had recovered from the devastating blow she had taken earlier. The name's Awari Akane. Apparently, I'm the ultimate gymnast. Nice to meet ya. Apparently, this girl was just. Dot she was the type who focused more on fighting than anything else, wasn't she? Well, it wasn't like Naruto disliked those kinds of people. Gahahaha. The muscular guy let out a boisterous laugh while holding his head. I am the ultimate team manager. N I D A I N E K O M A R U. Make sure to remember it. This guy was just loud. He reminded Naruto of Lee and Guy Sensei, especially with the fighting. Naruto had a feeling he was going to get along just nicely with him. He forgot that he wasn't supposed to be making friends here, but let's just move on. The next person to introduce themselves was a girl with long, silver hair, which was tied into two braids, and intense bright red eyes. She was standing off to the side of the gym, all by herself. My name is Pikoyama Piko. I am the ultimate swordswoman. It is nice to meet you all. She was totally the silent and cool type. In some ways, Naruto was reminded of Neji's and Sasuke's demeanor back in the day. He just hoped she wasn't stuck up like they had been. Right after her was the short blonde in the dark suit. Name's Kuzuriyu Fuyuhiko. I'm the ultimate Yakuza. Wow. His introduction was even less friendly than Hyoko's. But the announcement of his title had some of the others murmuring among themselves. Naruto turned to Miken, is there something up with this guy? Before the girl could answer, Nagito beat her to the punch. Eh? You mean you don't know? That's surprising, Uzumaki-kun. Everyone in the country should know of the Kuzuriyu clan. Naruto shook his head. Well, I don't. Nagito hummed. I see. He seemed to be thinking about something for a moment, but then continued. Put simply, the Kuzuriyu clan is the largest criminal syndicate in Japan. They have over 30,000 members in their group. And Kuzuriyu kun is the heir to that clan. That's why he's the ultimate Yakuza. So he was a clan heir, huh? Naruto had experience dealing with those. One of the students that hadn't said a word up to this point was up next. He was rather short and fat, had light brown hair, hazel eyes, and rosy cheeks. He wore a rather standard attire unlike most here. I'm Mitterai Ryota. I'm the ultimate animator. His introduction was brief and to the point. It made it hard for Naruto to give his opinion on the guy. Ha ha ha. I guess I should go next, huh? Nagito waved at the others and smiled. My name is Komeda Nagito. It's a pleasure to finally meet you all ultimates in person. He looked down. My talent is nothing special. I'm simply lucky. That's why I'm called the ultimate lucky student. Hyoko tapped her cheek. What kind of talent is that? Now, now. Koichi raised his hand and waved at the girl. You guys can get to know each other better later. This is only for introductions, remember? Hyoko huffed but said nothing else. You um. Miken began to twiddle with her fingers as she got the courage to make her introduction next. M. My name is Sumiki Miken, and I'm the ultimate nurse. I if you get hurt, please don't hesitate to rely on me. She was definitely a lot like Hanada alright. Soft spoken, but also very kind. It was enough to make Naruto smile. Kihihi. I guess the time has come for you fools to know of my existence, hum? Naruto's attention went to the last male student, other than himself, who had yet to introduce himself. He was dressed in a dark school uniform, which was heavily accessorized, his entire left arm was covered in bandages, and had a his right eye was red, and he had a scar running down his left eye, similar to Kakashi. A long purple scarf was around his neck, which covered the lower part of his face. He had dark hair with pale gray streaks through it, and a poof of hair that stuck up and was curly. He clutched his fist and raised his other hand forward. You may call me, Tanaka Gundam. May you never forget it, for it is the name that will one day rule this world. My title on this plane is, Dot the Ultimate Breeder. But my true identity is the one and only Supreme Overlord of Ice. Bow before my power, fools. Fuhahahahahaha. Four hamsters suddenly shot out from his scarf, all taking position on his shoulder and cheering alongside him. Naruto had to scratch his head, feeling even more confused than when he first met Miken, and that was saying something. This guy is just, he had no right words to describe him. The others seemed to be very confused as well, except for Hyoko who looked creeped out. And, of course, Nagito who was still smiling. Sighing, 
Naruto decided to be the one to talk next. Yeah. Well, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. My title is the ultimate ninja. Nice to meet you guys. The others all took this in, with Akane giving him a once over. She could feel it. This guy was strong. It made her want to fight him on the spot. Koichi nodded. Good, good. Now, for the last one. He looked over to the final girl who had been sitting down since she had arrived. She was dressed in a dark hoodie and skirt while she smashed the buttons on some handheld console. Naruto had some knowledge about those devices, referred to as video games. It was the first time he was seeing one in person, though. The girl frowned when she got a game over, but then looked around the room when she saw the others staring at her. Ah. She seemed to understand. There was a slight pause. I'm Nanami Chiaki, the ultimate gamer. Nice to meet you. There was another pause before she turned back to her game. She was both polite and chill at the same time, an interesting combo. Koichi got up to his feet. Well, that makes 16 then. You are now part of the 77th class of Hope's Peak Academy. Accept that with pride. And make sure to let your talents blossom even more during your years at this school. With that, I'm sure you'll be able to find the hope that brought you here. Nagito chuckled. I agree with that. Hyoko rolled her eyes. No one asked what you think, weirdo. Mikan fiddled in place. I don't think insulting each other is a good thing to do. Shut it, pig face. P pig face. Mikan slumped down. I don't have a pig face. Naruto patted her head some. Don't worry about it, Mikan. You don't have a pig face. She's just trying to get to you. Hyoko turned her sights on him. Hua. What did you say? She was cut off by Gundam who let out a massive gasp. You fiend. Just what kind of creature are you? Naruto blinked and looked at the guy. What? Are you talking to me? The breeder settled into a fighting stance. Speak at once, before I decimate your very existence. Naruto had no idea what he was talking about. Chuckling, Nagito decided to fill him in. I think he's asking why you have those markings on your cheeks, Uzumaki-kun. He paused for a moment. To tell you the truth, I was rather curious about them myself. Huh? Markings? Naruto touched his cheeks. Are you talking about my birthmarks? Just what sort of creature birthed you? Gundam cried out. Naruto gained a tick mark on his head. Oi! Take that back! My Ka-chan was a wonderful person. Foul beast! Don't get any closer! Do you want me to punch you? Cause I'll punch you. Sonia seemed to be enjoying the spectacle herself. Oh my. This intense feeling of friendship, they're such wonderful friends. Mahiru sweat dropped. I, I don't think that's what's happening right now. Hey, wait a second. Akane jumped into the fray. If you're going to fight, I'm joining in. Ha. Huh. Nekomaru picked his nose. Did you not learn anything from our practice session? Abuki was practically bouncing in place. This place is so lively. If I had to write a song about it, it'd be titled, Sunrise at the Gym. What the hell kind of title is that? Kazuichi said, looking at the girl like she was crazy. Why you can do it, you Uzumaki-san. Miken was cheering for Naruto as the blonde and Gundam were practically butting heads with one another by this point. I know you can defeat him. Teru Teru sighed happily. Two men pushing against one another so closely, ah, the passion, it's magnificent. Fuyuhiko crossed his arms and glanced to the side. Achimph. Idiots. Pico had no comment, and neither did Ryota. Chiaki merely lowered her game console for a moment before bringing it back up. Nagito. Well, he just smiled. A lot. Koichi scratched his head under his hat as the gym practically descended into chaos, with Naruto, Gundam, and Akane leading the charge. Oh boy. I sure have my hands full, don't I? Yes, this was going to be a very interesting year indeed. Koichi took a sip from the flask he carried with him at all times, not paying attention to the ongoings of the world around him. He didn't like to be awake this early, and he usually wasn't. However, since he had been assigned as a teacher this year, it seemed like his habit of sleeping in late was going to be cut short. Stupid responsibilities, doesn't the school understand my drinking hobby? They were short on staff at the moment, though, so it couldn't be helped he supposed. I gotta just continue my drinking and get up early in the mornings. It didn't sound too tough. He had done it today, hadn't he? True, he had been rather late. And yes, he felt like shit. But sacrifices had to be made for his booze. With this in mind, 
The man settled himself comfortably on the stage, resting his back on the wooden surface. He was gonna continue fantasizing about all the alcohol he was gonna drink later were it not for Mahiru who suddenly appeared over him, both hands on her hips. Geez. What kind of teacher are you? You know the gym was almost just destroyed, right? The girl was annoyed, Koichi knew this much. But what did she expect? All ultimates were crazy in some form or another. Bring them together in one place, and bam. Catastrophe was sure to happen. Sitting up. Koichi was about to explain this to the girl but stopped when he noticed the rest of his class staring at him with a mixture of annoyance, disgust, and just impatience. He didn't make the best first impression, did he? What's this? I thought you guys were fighting it out. Nekomaru, who held Akane by the back of her shirt, grunted. I was able to calm them down, somehow. Akane struggled against him. Let me go, old man. Things were just starting to look good. Naruto scratched the back of his head. A three-way doesn't exactly suit me right now, Akane. I just wanted to sucker punch Gundam. The beast tamer scowled. Why you? Dot how dare you call me by such a name? Huh? Is there something wrong with calling you that? Gundam looked like he wanted to say something else but held himself back. Instead, he crossed his arms and looked away. Achimph. Very well. Address me so casually if you must. Just know I'm prepared to destroy you at a moment's notice. That is the power I hold. With my four dark devas of destruction. Foo ha 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 ha. His four hamsters came flying out from his scarf again, all cheering alongside their master. Naruto being Naruto stepped up to the laughing breeder and looked at the hamsters with curiosity. Whoa. You really do have hamsters living inside your scarf. That's so cool. Sonia was right beside her fellow blonde, also mesmerized by the hamsters. He is right, it is incredible, and they're so cute too. Uck. Gundam tried to step back, not used to people being so friendly with him like this. S step back, you fools. Otherwise, you'll get blown away by my automatic barrier. Oh my. Sonia gasped, believing the boy. I don't want something like that to happen. Naruto shook his head. Calm down, Sonia. He's just kidding. Right? Hey, you guys, this isn't the time for this, Mahiru said from on top the stage. We're supposed to be having our entrance ceremony, remember? Mikan twiddled with her fingers. B, but we've already introduced ourselves. What else are we supposed to do? Mahiru turned to Koichi. That's what our new teacher is supposed to tell us, right? The man brought his arms up in defense. See, calm down, Koizumi chan. Don't call me that. All right. Koichi coughed into his hand and put his flask away. Well, we do have one more matter to attend to today, he told them as he stood up again. Actually, more like two. Fuyuhiko achimphed. And what are they? He just wanted to get this done with as soon as possible. It's a tour of the school, of course. Koichi grinned. I know some of you have been here before, but many of you haven't. That's why it's best if you get a feel for what your new campus looks like. You'll be here for the next three years, after all. Assuming none of them failed the practical exams, of course. Hiyoko tapped her cheek. Then we can start right now? She too wanted to leave already. She wanted to go home and eat her candy on her bed like she usually did during this time of the day. Not so fast. Koichi walked up to the podium on top of the stage. There, he pulled out a basket and showed it to the class. All your names have been written on sheets of paper and put in here. One of you will come up and draw a name, and whoever you get will be your partner for today. Koichi hadn't been the one to come up with this idea. He was originally just going to let them do whatever they wanted. But then Tengen had come up to him a few days ago and suggested this idea to him. While it was rare for the advisor to do that something like that, Koichi went with it mostly so that he could seem sophisticated to his students. Hiyoko huffed in annoyance. Why do we have to pair up? I don't want to be close to any of these idiots. Teru Teru chuckled nervously. Your appearance doesn't match your attitude at all. Nagito on the other hand seemed excited about the idea. Ha ha ha. So wonderful. I'm sure everyone will get closer because of this activity. Maiken glanced at Naruto who was scratching his head. She was hoping she would get paired up with him. But would he even want that? No, there's no way he would. She would probably just be a burden to him. Koichi placed the basket by the edge of the stage as Mahiru went down to join the others. Well, who wants to go first? Abuki. Abuki gets to be first. Once again, 
it was the enthusiastic girl who volunteered herself. Naruto was amused, finding her enthusiasm to be very addicting. The girl was humming to herself as she stuck her hand in the basket. She ravaged through the sheets of paper for a few seconds, probably to build up suspense. It was just her style to do something like that. Ah! Just pick one already, Hyoko shouted, annoyed. K. K. Abuki finally pulled out one paper, which was folded. Opening it up, she read the name out loud. Nanami Chiaki. She started laughing. Ha 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 ha, Abuki's partner is Chiaki-chan. Said girl was too busy gaming to pay attention, making Abuki pout. There needed to be more excitement here. The second person to choose was Kazuichi who stepped up to the plate almost immediately. Stay back, all of you. I have to choose Miss Sonia. Naruto tilted his head. Huh? Why? Do you have a crush on her or something? Let it be known that Naruto wasn't one to be very subtle about stuff like this. Kazuichi spluttered. W what? Nnn I mean, T that's none of your business, man. Hyoko looked away with a smug look. Just get it over with already, you loser. Not like any girl would want to be paired up with you in the first place. Why you don't have to say it like that? Kazuichi shouted, his heart nearly broken by Hyoko's words. The mechanic went for the basket and quickly picked out one of the folded papers. His heart was beating fast inside his chest. Was it going to be Miss Sonia? Please let it be Miss Sonia. He needed to get closer to the girl, and this activity was just right for the job. His hopes were shattered a moment later. Keiko made a Nagito. Nagito chuckled. Oh, I see. I'm so lucky to be paired up with someone as talented as you, Soda-kun. Kazuichi turned to Koichi with a pleading look. Can I have a do-over? Nope, now move along for the next person to get their turn. With slumped shoulders, Kazuichi walked back to the others. The one who went third was Mahiru, since none of the others seemed very interesting in going up. Except for maybe Sonia. The name the red-headed photographer picked up was none other than. Sionji Hyoko-san. Said girl looked at the redhead. So I guess I'm with you then. Her face displayed some measure of annoyance. No matter who she was paired up with, it would still feel like a chore to her. Mahiru, though, offered her a friendly smile. Imhum. I hope we can get along. Hyoko was taken back a bit by the smile but quickly recovered. W whatever. Naruto's eyebrow rose. Was Hyoko happy just now or what? Hard to tell with someone like her. Sonia decided to go up next, a bounce in her step. This was the first time she was ever doing something like this. It made her heart beat with excitement. Although she was a bit wary by the looks that Soda Man was giving her, she should probably stay far away from him. The princess pulled out a name from the basket with ease and read it out loud. Um, let's see. It says Sumiki Maiken. The nurse in question squeaked. Am me? She didn't think anyone would pick out her name. Or, more like, she had been hoping Naruto would. Her dream didn't come true, though. Sonia quickly ran up to her. Let's get along on this adventure, Sumiki-san. Maiken nearly tripped from having the girl so close to her. Why yes. Let's do our best. Naruto was happy to see that the girl was getting along with the others. Nekomaru followed afterwards, his massive hand reaching for one of the names inside the basket. My partner for today shall be, Kuzuri Ufuyuhiko. The Yakuza didn't look all that pleased by this development. Then again, he hadn't looked happy once since he had gotten here. Laughing, Nekomaru made his way over to Fuyuhiko. Ha 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 ha. We shall make sure to have the best record out of everyone else here. Fuyuhiko twitched. This isn't a competition, dumbass. Nekomaru didn't look phased at all by his comment, and instead continued to laugh. Naruto decided to take his turn here, tired of waiting. Nagito shot him a wave. Good luck, Uzumaki-kun. Maiken also cheered for him, albeit more softly and hesitantly. Why you can do it, Uzumaki-san. While he appreciated the support, all he was doing was pulling out a name from a basket. Nothing difficult about that. Naruto decided to not say anything, though, and merely accepted the encouragement. He quickly fished for one of the papers in the basket, and the name he pulled out was none other than Pikoyama Pico. The blonde looked to where the girl was standing. She had been one of the quiet ones so far not speaking very much. Naruto found that to be a bit lonely. Maybe he could change that? Looks like it's you and me, Pico. 
Pico closed her eyes. I'd prefer if you didn't address me so casually, Uzumaki-san. Naruto chuckled as he walked up to her. Don't be so stiff, Pico. No reason to act like old farts here. One of her eyebrows twitched. Regardless, I feel as if. Naruto cut her off and patted her on the back. Again, don't act so stiff. We're in the prime of our lives, not old people. Pico twitched again. Dealing with the Uzumaki was going to require all of her patience it seemed. As for Naruto, he was once again forgetting about his rule to not make any friends here. By this point, there was no turning back, though. His usual friendly nature was just rooted in him. He acted without thinking about it. That's just the kind of person he was. Not only that, but the students here seemed just like the type of people he'd like to hang out with. Fuyuhiko found the whole scene to be somewhat annoying to him. No one got that close to Pico. Almost everyone they met was scared of her. The only exception was their family. But this guy. What's his deal? Something was definitely up with the blonde, Fuyuhiko just didn't know what it was. Achimph. Let's see which of you fools shall serve as my unfortunate companion for this trip in the netherworld. Gundam walked forward and took a name from the basket. It seems, my companion shall be none other than the angry beast who dared to attack me earlier. Mahiru frowned a little. Just, what? It was all the girl could say. Nagito decided to translate for them. Seeing as Uzumaki kun already has a partner, I believe he is referring to Awari san. Huh. Me? Akane placed a hand on her hips and grunted in annoyance. You should have just said something in the first place, hamster man. Gundam visibly recoiled at the nickname. You fool. You dare refer to my four dark devas of destruction by such a term. He gripped his wrist in anger. They have the power to destroy this entire world. Kazuichi deadpanned. I think you're totally overestimating the power of those hamsters of yours. All right, that's enough. Koichi decided to take charge before another argument could break out. He needed them out of here ASAP so that he could take a nap. The last two remaining are Hanamura and Midorai. That means the two of you are together. Teru Teru flashed the animator a grin. Let's get along, okay? Ryota didn't know why, but he didn't trust that grin one bit. Koichi waved them off. Now go. Explore the school to your heart's content, or whatever. Mahiru narrowed her eyes, and you're not coming with us? Why would I? You're our teacher. It's your job. Peefed. You brats are old enough to know right from wrong. I'm not gonna hold your hand. This guy, he was rather blunt, wasn't he? Oh, that reminds me. Koichi suddenly looked up. After you're finished, go to the nurse's office on the first floor. There, you'll get fitted for your uniform. He shrugged a little. If you want to wear a uniform anyway. Like classes, it's not mandatory for you to do so. Many were pleased to hear that it wasn't mandatory, mainly Hyoko, Kazuichi, and Nekomaru. And Teru Teru too, since he rather enjoyed wearing his usual getup. It was a constant reminder of what he was here to accomplish. And with that, the 16 students began to file out of the gym in order to explore this new school of theirs. It was going to be a big chunk of their lives, after all. This was shaping out to be a long day. The groups of two had totally wandered off on their own, each interested in different parts of the school. For example, Teru Teru was excited to see what the cafeteria had to offer, as did Ryota for some reason. Heck, the animator was even bouncing in excitement when Teru Teru offered to cook him something. Hiyoko was complaining about walking so much, but Mahiru was somehow able to get her to keep going. The redhead apparently wanted to see the courtyards since, according to rumors, they were pretty beautiful. Kazuichi kept sulking that he wasn't with Sonia while Nagito tried to console him, the two vanishing down the hall. Speaking of Sonia, Maiken had been curious about the nurse's office, so the two girls had headed off in that direction. Naruto didn't know where Ibuki and Chiaki had gone off to but knowing Ibuki it was definitely not going to stay quiet around here for too long. Gundam and Akane were also a mystery, as was Nekomaru and Fuyuhiko. There was no telling what kind of trouble they could get into, but Naruto decided not to worry about it too much. He and Pico were already at the fifth floor of the school. They had come up here because nothing else was really interesting to them on the lower levels. Hum. There should also be another class joining the school this year, Naruto thought, scratching his chin. He wondered what kind of talents they would have. Was there anyone who could help him in that class? What about the older students? He needed to get in touch with them as well, 
see if he could probe them about finding a way to another dimension. The thought of failure never entered Naruto's mind. There couldn't be failure. Pico stopped in front of the dojo, which was located on this floor. The door was opened, so she was able to admire the inside of the room. It was pretty well kept, and it had the standard training equipment she would expect from a dojo. Naruto stopped next to her, scratching his belly. Man, I'm starting to get hungry. Maybe I should ask Teru Teru to cook me up some ramen. The cook could probably pull off something divine if his ultimate talent was all about cooking. Pico shook her head. You get familiar with people really quick, don't you, Uzumaki-san? The blonde shrugged. I guess. I've just never bothered with etiquette and stuff like that. In my life, there was never a need for it. It was more about survival than anything else. Pico's face took on a more somber mood. She could kind of guess some of the implications that came with his statement. I see. I'm not sure whether I should envy you or not. I don't know either. Naruto walked over to one of the lockers, checking to see what was inside. He saw some arrows and a bow. Nothing his style. But like I said back in the gym, it doesn't really matter now. We're all the same in here. I would have to disagree with you there, Pico replied. Everyone walks a different path in life. Nothing can be ever truly understood because of it. The only thing we have in common is talent. It's why we were brought together to this school. Naruto chuckled at that. Talent, huh? Did I say something funny? Naruto turned his attention over to one of the other lockers to see if there was anything more entertaining in there. No it's just, well, you reminded me of something funny is all. Pico crossed her arms. Care to share it? Hmm. Naruto's eyebrow rose when he found several bamboo swords, or shinai as they were known, lined neatly inside this locker. He grabbed one of them. It's nothing big. Just that, back in my village, I was known as the dead last in my class. Pico's curiosity was genuinely piqued. You're not from around here? Not even close, no, the blonde stepped back from the locker and gave the bamboo sword some practice swings. My village is far from here, and we're not exactly up to date with all the technological stuff you guys got going on around here. It's been troublesome trying to adjust to everything. Just when I think I got the hang of it, something else comes along to prove me wrong. It's like I'm a baby or something. Despite herself, Pico was somewhat amused by how disgruntled the boy sounded when he said that. Anyway, I wasn't exactly the star child back in my school in my village, Naruto carried on. In fact, just about everyone thought I was never going to make it as a ninja. What happened? Simple. I proved them all wrong. Pico's mouth thinned. You make it sound so easy. Naruto shook his head. It wasn't. Some days, it felt truly hopeless. It was only worse when I saw just how skillful some of my other friends were. The gifts they had been born with, well, it certainly put a damper on my mood. But I was able to get through it all. And I did it through effort. Naruto turned to look at the girl. Say, Pico. What do you think? Do you think talent trumps effort, or that effort can overcome talent? Pico found herself unable to answer that question. She had never once put any thought into it. I, am not sure. Naruto pointed the bamboo sword at her. Have you practiced hard to gain the skills that now make you the ultimate swordswoman? I have, yes. Pico looked down at the wooden floor. There, is someone I must protect, at all costs. It's the whole reason behind my existence. That is why I work hard every day to polish my skills. To be useful to that person, to repay what cannot be repaid. I work hard every day for that reason alone. Pico didn't know why she was talking about something like this. She never talked to anyone like this. But this Naruto person, he made it so easy for her to open up and be truly honest for once. As for Naruto, he was beginning to see that there was more to Pico than just her cool and composed nature. She was still human. Grinning, Naruto reached back for the locker to grab another bamboo sword. Acting on instinct, Pico caught the bamboo sword thrown her way before she could even look up at the grinning Naruto. What, as this? Naruto closed the locker and walked over to the center of the dojo, holding his bamboo sword over his shoulder. We're gonna have a practice match, you and I, Pico frowned. Are you serious? Yeah. It said strong people can communicate best when they trade blows. And not to toot my own horn or anything, but I consider myself pretty strong. I bet you are too. I'm sure we can get to know each other a lot better through a sparring match than through words. Why? I'm bored, and I'm sure you are too. Best way to kill time. 
Of all the responses he could have given her, Pico hadn't been expecting that. She appreciated it all the same. Pico walked over to stand in front of Naruto in the middle of the dojo, her bamboo sword at her side. She gripped it tightly. It's true what they say. Each weapon feels differently. Pico was used to handling her personal sword, which she hadn't brought with her today since Fuyuhiko had forbidden her from doing so. It would make her seem more amicable, he said. Naruto recalled Tenten saying something like that to him once, about how each weapon was different. He really didn't get it since he wasn't much of a weapon specialist, but he could understand what Pico was trying to say. I'm sure you'll be fine. You're fighting against a novice who's not used to handling a sword. Amusement flashed on Pico's face. And yet, you still ask me to spar? Me, the ultimate swordswoman? Naruto shrugged, grinning. Meh. It keeps things interesting. That, Pico could agree with at least. And so, the two teens faced one another, their stances ready for battle. Their faces were full of determination. Neither doubted the other's skill. They could both tell that the other was a warrior, so they wouldn't make the mistake of underestimating one another. The first clash happened in an instant. Fuyuhiko was close to yelling at the gigantic fool who followed after him through the halls of Hope's Peak Academy. The Yakuza didn't really have a goal in mind. He just wanted to be alone and see what he could find around here. Nekomaru had wanted to check out any of the training facilities in the school, but Fuyuhiko had refused. He wasn't into that sort of thing. This inevitably led to the current conundrum they were facing. You need to have more spirit in you, Kuzuriyu. Otherwise, you'll be destined to fail. Tacha. Don't start lecturing me, dumbass. I know what I need. Nekomaru grinned widely. Then how about I take you under my wing? I promise to lead you to greater heights, not only as a leader, but also as an athlete. Fuyuhiko's eyebrow twitched. That makes no sense. I'm no athlete. Nekomaru looked over Fuyuhiko's body. It's true. You lack the appropriate muscle mass. However, that doesn't mean you can't get there with hard work. With the right diet and training regime, I'm sure you'll see yourself blossoming into an even greater athlete. I guarantee that. Otherwise, my name isn't N-I-D-A-I-N-E-K-O-M-A-R-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U. It was just like what Fuyuhiko thought. This guy was extremely loud. But another part of him, one that he didn't like to admit existed, was glad that the team manager was talking to him like this. It had been a very long time since anyone talked to him casually. People were usually afraid of him since he was the heir of the biggest Yakuza gang in the country. Not that he could blame them. It just got a bit lonely after a while, though. Maybe, Pico and I can finally have something here. At that moment, that hope was etched into Fuyuhiko's heart. It was something else that he would never admit, though. The pair continued up the stairs as Nekomaru tried to get Fuyuhiko to follow with his training program. He managed to hide it well, but if one looked closely, they would see a small smile on Fuyuhiko's face. The conversation soon stopped, however, when Nekomaru heard something down the hall. The two were now on the fifth floor without being aware of it. Their back and forth had kept them more entertained than they realized. Hum. This is, Fuyuhiko looked at the team manager, something wrong? You don't hear it. Nekomaru walked closer to the noise. It sounds like, dot two people are trading blows with one another. Huh. Fuyuhiko didn't hear anything. But as he followed Nekomaru, the noise began to register into his ears. Unlike Nekomaru, Fuyuhiko realized what the noise was, though. He had been hearing it for a very long time. Ever since he was a little kid in fact. Pico, acting on instinct, Fuyuhiko ran full speed toward the noise. Hey. Nekomaru was caught off guard by this but soon followed. He was both surprised and delighted to see that Fuyuhiko was pretty fast if he wanted to be. The noise led the two boys to the dojo. The doors had been left wide open, so they were able to see what was going on inside. It went without saying that it surprised them both. Naruto and Pico were fighting, after all. Words had not been spoken between Naruto and Pico for some time now, the two looking like blurs as they continued to strike at one another throughout the dojo. For Naruto, who never had used a sword in combat before, this was a refreshing change of pace. Since he had no true skill with it, he had to rely on his speed and agility to be able to keep up with Pico. For Pico, who had been holding a sword all her life, this kind of fighting was right up her alley. The problem was that the blonde was much too fast for her. Faster than anyone else she had ever seen. This way why she had to make do with her advanced skills with the sword to keep up. 
but she knew that, if the Uzumaki wasn't holding himself back from just using a sword to attack her, this sparring session would probably already be over. But where was the fun in that? Because that's the thing. Pico was having fun. It was the first time she had felt this way when practicing with her swordsmanship. It wasn't that she hated it. In fact, more often than not, it calmed her down. At the same time, the only reason she took up the sword was so that she could stand alongside her young master. It was a constant reminder to her of her destiny as a tool. That's why she had never really had fun when dueling with others. Not until today, that is. The two were suddenly in front of one another in the middle of the dojo, their bamboo swords held against the other. It was amazing to see that the swords had stayed intact throughout the whole fighting session as the two were going at it pretty hard. Naruto grinned when he saw the look on Pico's face. That's a nice smile you have there, Pico-chan. You look a lot better that way. Pico felt her cheeks burn red at the compliment. But more importantly, was she really smiling? She hadn't smiled in such a long time that she had forgotten how to. But now she was. Oh my, such an intense atmosphere. Abuki feels like she'll be swept away. The two teens stopped when they heard the sing-song voice. They turned to the entrance of the dojo only to find that their whole class was there, watching them. They had been so focused on each other that they hadn't noticed anyone show up. How embarrassing. Stepping back, Naruto let out a sigh in order to calm down his heart and his nerves. It had been an awesome training session for him. I guess we'll have to call this a tie for now. Pico had to agree, also relaxing. Yes, but I am impressed. Even though you're a complete amateur with a sword, you are very adept at fighting. Naruto grinned some more. Ultimate ninja here, remember? Pico sighed and chuckled. Right, Abuki was quick to join the two, slapping them in the back. Hey now. Don't be forgetting all about us, you lovebirds. Abuki will not allow it. Naruto blinked. Lovebirds? Nagito spoke up here, his face bright. That was incredible you too. I was able to see your talents shine through. And even though I had my doubts about Uzumaki-kun, he proved me wrong. He then looked down and sighed, a bitter look spreading across his face. I'm so ashamed of myself. I should have known better than to doubt you, Uzumaki-kun. I really am the worst. Kazuichi rolled his eyes. He was already getting sick of this guy. Can you just shut up please? Sonia's face displayed her excitement. Ooh, I too had my doubts about you being a Japanese ninja, Uzumaki-san. But you are. She looked at Pico. And you were wonderful as well, Pikoyama-san. Keeping up with a Japanese ninja, it's incredible. Mahiru laughed awkwardly. Um. Sonia-san, ninjas are only from Japan, you know? Hiyoko huffed and looked away. Stupid princess. Let her be. Kazuichi shouted, jumping to defend his new love. It's just some, culture shock. That's all. I knew it. You are strong. Akane smirked and raised her firsts. I want to fight you, Uzumaki. But forget the swords, just come at me. Naruto chuckled. Sorry, Akane. But maybe some other time. I need to get my measurements done for my uniform. Akane sulked. Mikan appeared next to Naruto, looking worried. Hey are you alright, Uzumaki-san? You're not hurt, are you? Naruto patted her on the head. I'm fine. It was just a practice session. Nothing you have to worry about, Mikan. The girl found herself enjoying the head petting more and more. In fact, it might become addicting to her. You are right about that, though. Mahiru remembered what Koichi had told them. If we want to get our uniforms, we'll have to go down to the nurse's office. Sonia smiled. Yes, there's a teacher waiting downstairs for us. Sumiki-san and I already confirmed that. I'm quite fine with what I have on. Teruteru flashed them a grin. It's a lot more, intimate, don't you think? Su G-R-O-O-O-O-O-S-S-S-S-S-S. Abuki was the one who voiced what every female in the room was thinking. I don't need any stupid uniforms, Akane said while picking her ear. That just sounds like a lot of trouble. Jeez. Nekomaru crossed his arms over his massive chest. You're quite a simple woman, aren't you? Naruto turned his attention to Nekomaru, remembering something important. He had finally realized it in his fighting session with Pico. He needed to keep up with his training if he was going to make sure he was going to stick around here. He personally also wanted to keep his skills. Normally, he took care of his own training, but there was nothing wrong with getting some help either. Yo, Nekomaru. 
I actually need a favor from you if you don't mind. Oh? Nekomaru faced the blonde, and what might that be? Naruto went to the locker to put the bamboo sword back where it belonged. Since I'm in the city, I no longer have anyone to help me with my training. So I was wondering if you could come up with something for me, if you can. Determination started to flash on Nekomaru's face, and did the electricity from his eyes get stronger too? Leave it to me. I'll make sure to give you the best training regime you have ever seen. Or else, my name isn't N-I-D-A-I-N-E-K-O-M-A-R-R-R-R-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U. Naruto was amused. Thanks. I appreciate it. Nagito chuckled. Yep. Everyone's hope is shining through today, it's so wonderful. Ryota could only shake his head when he heard this. What a strange guy. Now, let us march onward. Gundam faced the door with his four dark devas of destruction striking poses all across his body. It is time to meet our maker. Fuhahahaha. Mahiru sweat dropped. We're only getting our uniforms. Hyoko sulked. There are so many weird people around here. I hope I don't become one too. Kazuichi scratched his cheek. I think you already are one. The blonde dancer glared at the mechanic. No one asked you. Now, now. Mahiru kept the girl from pouncing on Kazuichi. We should all get along here. We are going to be together from now on. I fully agree with that. Nagito smiled. If we're together, I'm sure everyone's hopes will shine even stronger. No one knew what to say to that. Except for Naruto who walked up to the boy and patted him on the back. Nagito, we're going to have to make sure you learn how to talk later. Oh. Nagito seemed uncertain about something. You're even using my first name too? Well, yeah. We are kind of friends now, aren't we? Nagito didn't seem to know how to take this. I'm flattered by your words, Uzumaki-kun. But. Sheesh. Stop saying weird stuff already. Naruto shook his head before looking over to Teruteru as they all began to exit the dojo. Teruteru. I actually have a request for you too. Oh my, you're so forward, Uzumaki-kun, what's with this strange vibe in the air? Nagito watched everyone exit. He didn't understand this strange feeling in his chest. What could it be? What's your hometown like, Uzumaki-san? Erm, you're getting too close, Sonya, P please give Uzumaki-san his space. Kazuichi was positively glowing with jealousy as he watched Naruto be surrounded by not only Maiken, but also Sonya. Maiken had offered to take Naruto's measurement for his uniform. The blonde had taken her up on the offer, not seeing any reason to turn her down. Sonya just wanted to know more about the Japanese ninja. Nagito chuckled softly as he noticed Kazuichi's current demeanor. Uzumaki-kun certainly is popular, isn't he? I don't like it, Kazuichi muttered his jealousy growing the more he stared at the scene. Miss Sonia should be hanging over my shoulder right about now. Man, what a weird bastard you are. Fuyuhiko made for the door, having already gotten all his measurements done. He had his PE uniform in hand as well. Apparently those were also being handed out here, which Koichi had forgotten to mention to them. Mahiru hadn't been pleased about that, calling their teacher a drunk old man. No one had dared argue with her. It's only your first day and you're already after someone. I can't help it. Kazuichi glared at Naruto who was too busy answering Sonia's questions to notice. I've always dreamed of going out with a hot blonde, and Miss Sonia is a princess, that makes it all the better. Fuyuhiko could only shake his head in dismay as he walked out. Before closing the door, though, he gave Naruto one final glance. He had never seen Pico express that kind of emotion before. It, Dot was nice to him, to see his childhood friend act like that. To not be tied down by his clan's stupid rules. For her to just be a normal girl. This place, it really was something else. Pico noticed Fuyuhiko's stare and furrowed her brow, not understanding what her young master was doing exactly. It confused her, but it was probably nothing serious. Hopefully. Naruto's words were still fresh in her mind, though. She knew she had some thinking to do tonight. Akane frowned as she picked up one of the female PE uniforms. Do we really have to wear this? It seems to be for physical exercise, Ryota said, already having his in hand. I wonder why we have those here. I think it's great. Nekomaru grinned. It's always a good thing to train the body. I just can't keep up with all of this, Hyoko said as she looked over the PE uniforms on the table. She had been happy that she didn't have to wear the school uniforms. 
Her normal clothes suited her just fine. But this, this was just embarrassing for her. Mahiru blushed a little. I understand what you mean. Bloomers are a bit, risky. I've never heard of these things before, Naruto admitted as he walked up to them. Miken had finished with his measurements already for his school uniform. Sonia was by his side, also curious to check out their PE uniforms. Oh my! I have never worn such clothing before. It does not cover much, does it? MHMMHMM. Some blood began to drip down from Teruteru's nostril. I believe the school has made a fine choice. Indeed. Hyoko looked like she wanted to puke. Now I really don't want to wear these. Mahiru sighed. I know how you feel, Sionji san, but I don't think we have a choice. Sonia clapped and smiled. Well, I for one am looking forward to trying them out. It is all part of the experience. Kazuichi beamed. I agree with you, Miss Sonia. It can't hurt. Mahiru rolled her eyes. It looked like she was going to have to deal with a lot of perverts around here. But, Naruto chan, Abuki suddenly appeared over the blonde's shoulder, poking him on the cheek. The girl just wanted to touch the whiskers. They looked really cute to her. How do you not know what bloomers are? Like, all guys know what they are. Teruteru smiled even more. I certainly know what they are. Ryota backed away from the short boy. You might not want to publicize that too much. Nobody noticed Chiaki walking out in the background. She already had everything she needed, so there was no reason for her to stick around. Naruto shrugged. We didn't have these where we come from. Are they special or something? Teruteru shook his head. Oh, Uzumaki-kun. How you must have suffered. Mahiru glared at the cook. Or maybe he just has more decency than you. Teruteru didn't seem bothered by her comment at all. I assure you, mademoiselle, no one has more decency than me. I it is a little embarrassing to be wearing bloomers in front of others, Mikan said softly while poking her fingers together. Naruto didn't get it. Hum? Really? Is it really that embarrassing? It's megaton embarrassing, Abuki exclaimed, still poking his cheek. Naruto would just have to see for himself then, maybe. God, why he was looking forward to that. He couldn't be becoming more like Aero Senen, not a chance. Akane scowled. I can make do with what I got. I don't need this. It's part of the school rules, Pico reminded her as she walked toward the door. I would take one at least if I were you. It is strange that they would enforce something like this over the official uniforms, Sonia muttered, mostly to herself. Kazuichi shrugged. Eh, hey, who cares? It is what it is. He was just looking forward to seeing Sonia in bloomers. That would be a sight. Anyway, I believe this is where our day ends, correct? Nekomaru said as he noticed Pico walking out. Ah. Abuki raised her hand. Abuki has a question. What classroom are we in? No one had an answer for her. Mahiru frowned. Geez, our new teacher didn't even tell us that. Mikan turned to the teacher that had been set up here to help them with their uniforms. I'm sorry, but do you know where our classroom is? The female teacher shook her head. If I had to guess, I would say 1B since you guys are section B but I couldn't you give you a straight answer. I'm sorry. The help was still welcomed. We're just gonna have to guess tomorrow then, Kazuichi said while scratching his cheek. Sonia hummed. Our new teacher doesn't seem very dependable, or am I wrong to say that? No, you're totally right about that, Mahiru said. She didn't like how Koichi reminded her of her father. Not one bit. Gundam shook his head. Regardless, we shall find the answer through the fog, dot the only way of knowing is through actions. Nagito chuckled. We'll get our answer tomorrow either way. Naruto had nothing else to add. Naruto noticed that, for the most part, his fellow classmates were staying in the dorms of the school. There were some exceptions, like Fuyuhiko with his clan. Pico had seemed to vanish as well, and Chiaki had somehow left without anyone noticing her. And then there was also Sonia. You have your own hotel? Naruto asked the foreign princess as the two walked toward the main gates of the school. The Uzumaki was staying with Tengen, after all. Sonia nodded and brought her hands together. Yes. My parents didn't think it would be too safe if I stayed in the dorms. She pouted a little here. Even though I insisted and told them that I wanted to stay here. The whole reason I came here was to immerse myself in Japanese culture. How can I do that when I'm staying at a hotel? Naruto shrugged. You can learn a lot from hotels, I think. He rarely stayed in them. 
The only times he did was when he was out on long missions, but even then, it wasn't to observe the people around him, or the culture for that matter. Moving from that, Naruto felt that he could relate with Sonia in that regard. The two of them were from different places than the others here. Sonia's country was apparently very unique when compared to Japan. Or most of the world for that matter. That's why the girl got excited at the smallest of things. Well, that, and that she was also a very sheltered princess. It seems like this school is everything I was hoping for when I first heard of it. Sonia smiled fondly as she stretched out her arms. For the first time, I can be around people my own age. With the way everyone is, I'm sure you'll have your fill of fun. Seriously. Every single one of their classmates had their own quirks that made them crazy. Even Mahiru was looking like someone who fit with them despite how, normal, she was. Chiaki, Dot was just Chiaki right now. Sonia giggled, and Naruto had to admit that it sounded rather heavenly to his ears. Was this the influence the ultimate princess had on others? How very strange. I look forward to getting to know you better as well, Uzumaki-san. Naruto sighed. Just call me Naruto, since I call you Sonia, I think it's fair. That, and Uzumaki-san was just too formal for him. Oh, I see. Sonia flexed her arm. I shall take you up on that offer. I give praise to thee, Naruto. Naruto merely laughed in response. Yeah, this was something else for him. To be having this much fun, it was unexpected. But it was also welcomed. And so, this concluded the first day for Section B of the 77th class of Hope's Peak Academy. Fun and misadventures were on the horizon. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.